Hello again, Mountain View family. Welcome to the Mountaintop Advent Series. As we continue to read, Love Came Down at Christmas by Sinclair B. Ferguson. Chapter 11. Easily Irritated. Love is not irritable. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 and 5. It is easy to get irritated at Christmas time when the overplayed Christmas jingles that miss its real meaning or the impossible to untangle Christmas tree lights or the look how well our children are doing Christmas letters. At one level, the causes of our irritation seem obvious enough. But a deeper irritation usually goes unrecognized. Irritation with God. A minister I knew sometimes took an unusual pastoral approach with people. He would ask them to read through the parables of Jesus and tell him which ones irritated them. I think he was onto something. Preachers are often told that what really helps people is narrative stories. That was how Jesus preached. He told parables. Maybe it is true that stories help people understand better, but that is not why Jesus told parables. In fact, he said that he told them to make clear who didn't understand them. They might like the story, but entirely miss its point. My friend, which is nearer to the Mark Jesus parables are meant to get under our skin, to reveal that our sin has created within us an irritation with God and his ways. And until we embrace Christ in the gospel, we will continue to be irritated with God and refuse to yield to him. Take the parable about the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18, verses 10 to 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, Be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus added, I tell you, this man, the tax collector, went down to his house justified rather than the other. Of course, you knew it, but that is only because you are familiar with Jesus' punchline to the story. And if you're honest, that line no longer has any punch for you, which may mean you still don't get it. The people who listened to Jesus, his words must have felt like a blow to the stomach. But if you think honestly about it, you will notice something. You may in fact be more like the Pharisees than the tax collector. Chances are you go to church, so for a start, you are not like other men. You thank God for keeping you from sin, don't you? Plus, you have high moral standards. You try not to cheat. You treat people fairly. You are not sexually immoral, like so many other people. And you engage in religious activities. You try to give faithfully and to be disciplined. And it is a long time since you beat your breast in church, even metaphorically, and cried out for mercy. Maybe you once beat your breast, But now, well, you don't see so much need for that these days. Not now that you have been forgiven. So, are you more like the Pharisees than the tax collector? If so, here's the problem. It was the tax collector who walked out of the temple justified. God's ways in this parable can be just as irritating to us as in Jesus' parable about equal pay for laborers in a vineyard, no matter how many hours in the day they had worked. It can be very irritating to discover that the last will be first and the first last. 
But what is the point of this diversion into understanding the parables? Simply this, only when this fundamental irritation is brought to the surface and dealt with by God's grace will we begin to experience and express the love that is not irritable. Irritation with God and His ways was injected into the human race in the Garden of Eden. Don't you see that God isn't really fair and loving, said the serpent? Did he surround you with fruit-bearing trees just to irritate you by not letting you eat of any of them? Eve struggled a little, but her vision was already beginning to be distorted. The irritation with God soon became irritation between husband and wife, and then brother and brother. If you are going to be delivered from being irritable, we need to find a cure for this fundamental irritation with God about His ways. Only then will we be able to love and not be irritated. Irritability by whatever name we call it and whether caused by other people or our circumstances is at root irritation with God for the way He is providentially governing our lives. We blame our circumstances, or other people, or our background, or even our genes. But none of these can function apart from God's sovereign will and purpose. Only when we have yielded to the sovereign will of God, knowing that He will work everything together for our good, do we learn a healthy spiritual detachment from the irritations of life. That doesn't mean we are fatalistic. It does not mean that we do not try to change things for the better, relieve pain, or remove obstacles to happiness. But now we do all those things with our hearts at rest in God, knowing that He works for the good of those who love Him. The remedy for our irritability, therefore, will not be found in a determination to be less irritable, but only in a sense of the love of God for me and in the trust in Him it produces. Jesus' life was marked by irritations from beginning to end. From birth in an outhouse to followers who proved to be fickle, enemies who plotted against Him, people who disappointed Him, religious leaders who planned to kill Him, an empire whose representatives declined to vindicate him, soldiers who vented their cynicism upon him, spectators who came to watch his crucifixion. His whole life was one long saga of irritants. Yet we hear no irritable word. We see no irritable action or reaction. What we observe is a humble bowing before his Father's will. How is that possible? Because he loved his father, trusted his plan, and knew that his ways were perfect. When he comes to indwell us by his spirit, that same grace in which he lived from the womb to the throne begins to be reproduced in us. There is no irritability in Jesus. In fact, it was to deal with ours that love came down at Christmas. I want to take a moment to thank you for reading along with us today from the book Love Came Down at Christmas. We would like to thank the Good Book Company for graciously allowing us to share this book in its entirety with our followers from camp. To purchase a copy of this book for yourself or for a loved one, please go to thegoodbook.com or Amazon the links can be found in the description of these readings that we are sharing with you. If you enjoy this book and want to learn more about the author or further publishings, please like or follow The Good Book Company on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We trust you have a safe, joyful, and wonderful holiday season.